Thanks for joining me. In this training session, I'm going to show you how to get registered in SAM.gov. Now, if you're new in the government space, SAM is the database where every government contractor needs to be registered in. SAM stands for the Systems for Award Management. Website is SAM.gov, S-A-M.gov. So I've got my software opened up here. And so we're going to go into the preparation phase. And under the preparation phase, we're going to go to the registration because registration has to do with SAM and all the type of different certifications out there. But today, we're going to talk about getting registered in SAM, so which is row number 226. So under that, we're going to open up the attachment here in the software that's going to take you step by step. This document here will guide you step by step and how to get registered and so you just kind of follow this here so there's 17 steps 18 steps in terms of getting all of your content information into SAM but for today we're not going to use this sheet here the reason is because I already have the software open so what I'm going to show you how to do it through the software so first item is we need to get our SIT code now the reason why we need to get our SIT code is because we got to get our Duns and Bradstreet number. So to get our Duns number, uh, it requires that we have our SID code. And now they can look it up for you, but you know that requires you making phone calls and all that stuff. So just click on this link here, and it's going to take you right to the site. So we're here on the site, and we're going to look up our SID code. We're going to once we find our SID code, we're going to write that down, and we're going to save that so that when we get our Duns number, we'll have that available. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's assume that I do some kind of computer work. So type that computer, hit search, and I look through what my services are. So let's assume I do computer program services. So my zip code is this four digit number here, 7371. So you, you know, so if I'm registering, uh, in SAM, I need to write this down here, 7371, because I'll need that potentially later on, or actually later on, so that I can get my DUNS number. So 7371 is my number. So now I'm done with this part. I can go ahead and close out of that, go back to the software. Now the next step is I need to get my DUNS number. And so to get my DUNS number, I click on this next link here. So the software is designed to where it takes you step by step through the government contracting process. So now, click on this link, come here, I see that, okay, hey, this is where I get my DUNS number. So I can request it through the web or I can email them, but to do it by the web is a lot easier because it only takes about a day to get it done. And they'll email you your DUNS number when it's done. And you just kind of follow through here. So I'm from the United States. I'm going to click continue and it's going to take me here and I'm going to go and finish out filling this out but I already have my DUNS number so I'm not going to do that for you but this will tell you just kind of follow these instructions and you'll get to where you they'll get your DUNS number now getting your DUNS number is free uh, if, if Dunn or Bradstreet tries to charge you for it uh, don't don't fall for it because getting your Dun and Bradstreet number for doing government contracting work is a free service. So now that I have my Dun's number, then I need to get my NAICS codes. So to get my NAICS code, I click on this link here. Now I'm at the census site. I can search for my NAICS codes here. Now NAICS stands for North American Industry Classification System. NAICS is the classification system where every single product or service that the government buys is tracked through a six-digit NAICS code. And so your product and your service is going to be tracked. Uh, it's going to be put out in terms of a solicitation RFP uh, with the NAICS code. It's going to be awarded to you with a NAICS code and it's going to be reported in, the, uh, in terms of for the accounting purposes and for accountability purposes through the next code. So again, I'm going to come here, I'm going to type in computer because we're going to use that as our sample today. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to look for which computer falls under, 
which NAICS code under the word keyword computer falls into what I'm interested in doing to the government or what my product or services are. So if you're a manufacturing, you can choose one of the manufacturing NAICS code. But because we're a service provider, so and we're a programmer, so that's that's who I'm uh, posing to be at this time for the purpose of uh, the SAM registration example. So I'm going to use the 541511. Okay, it says computer software programming, which matches with my SIG code as well. But my SIG code is only four digit, whereas my NAICS code is six digits. And so it's 541511. So that's my NAICS code. That's one of my NAICS code. Now, if you look at the instruction, instruction says get up to five or seven. That would be ideal because you do more than just software programming unless that's really the only thing you do but there's multiple next code that you can that your company will fall under so we're going to look for other next code now notice that the 541511 has multiple services under that but I'm going to you know we do systems integration office automation I'm going to use 541512 as well so I've got two next code now 541511 541512 and then I'm also going to use 541513, which is computer systems facilities. Uh, and then I'm going to use this catch all 541519, computer disaster recovery, uh, software installation services. So I'm going to use this one here as well. And I can go and do, you know, if you do computer tr software training, you can also use 611420. So you want to write down your next code. So I'm going to use just uh, four next code for our example here. Well, actually, I'm going to use five. So I'm going to use 541, 511, 512, 513, 519, and 611420. So those are going to be my next codes that I'm going to use. Now let's go back to our guide here. Then you want to determine whether you're a large company or a small company because when you register in SAM, it's going to ask you whether you're a large or small company at some point so we're going to use this link here to give us the SBA's definition of what is a small company or what is a large company now we just found our next code so we're going to go to our next code here and based on our next code we're going to determine whether we are a large company or not so let's assume that my company that I'm registering here and trying to get into SAM does about three million dollars a year and that's our sample company here so I'm gonna go to our next code which is 541 511 so here it is right here so the size standard is 27.5 million dollars so my company is only three million dollars so obviously it's gonna be a small company based on this size standard here now notice the other NAICS code, 512, 513, 519, all of these are the same size in terms of uh, revenue for determining size standard. Now that I have that, I know that I'm a small business. I can check off that and I'll move on to the next session. Now I need to determine my, my PSC codes. And the reason why I'm asking you to do all of this here is when you're in SAM, Sam's going to ask you for all this information. So we're just getting it done in advance. Next step, I'm going to go to and determine my PSC codes. I'm going to click on this link here. So to find my PSC codes, now that I'm here, I clicked on the link and I'm here. And since we're saying that I am in IT, computer programming, uh, in the PSC systems, this is a really old uh, numbering system. Uh, so it's going to be automatic data processing and telecommunication it says under D for computer now you can kind of search through and see where it will be fall under but automatic data processing will fall under uh, computer programs software development IT and stuff like that so I can come here and look at which one IT telecom integrated hardware software service solutions so D 318 will be one of my PSC codes I probably want to use D399 as well. So I'll, I'll take a few of these here and take about four or five and write those down as part of my um, 
SAM registration data that I need to gather so I can get registered in SAM. Next step, I want to go ahead and come back to the software. Now that I've got my PSC codes, you should already have your EIN number. And so uh, that's, that's your uh, identification number with the IRS. And so you should have that ready. So you, have, you want to get that ready for the SAM registration. You should already have opened a bank account because you're going to need that also for uh, your SAM because the way the government pays you is through electronic funds transfer. Once you do a, a project, they're going to pay you through EFT. So you need to have that for your SAM registration. And then you need to gather your information in terms of your first and second point of contact or your POC. You want to have the, your email, phone number, address, all that ready for your two point of contacts. You're going to need that for later. And then once you gather all this information, then we're ready to go and register in SAM. So now I'm going to click on here, this link. And it's going to take me to SAM. And now that I'm in SAM, I want to go ahead and create an account. Because if you this is your first time, you're not in the system, you want to go click on create account. So there's two registration part. The first part of it is you want to register, create a personal account, individual account for yourself. And then once you have a, which is what they call a username for you as an individual. Because there may be five, six different people that are the handle the registration for the company. So every single one of you will have your own user account. So you will click on create an account, fill out all this information. And once you have all this information fill out, you hit next and it's going to walk you through the process. As it walks you through the process, you'll be finished. And then once you're finished, then you will log in and then register your company. So that's how you register in SAM. And there you have it. Now, I've taken you step by step in terms of how to get registered in SAM. So these, you know, are all the steps that you need to do to get there. All right, now that we've created our individual uh, account, now I can go and actually register the company in SAM.gov. So to log in, I go to SAM.gov. And I would log in now because now I have an account. So it, it, they will email it to you. So you check your email, you have your username, all your password that you used. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this is my login for the work that I do here. So I'm going to show you the inside, what it looks like. Once you're in, you want to say accept. And here you are. Now you want to, you know, you now you can have multiple people. You're the user, but now you're ready to register your entity. And so you come over here to these little buttons here, menu here. You can register or update entity. So in this situation, assuming that you haven't registered your company yet, you want to hit this button here. Click on that, and so you can register a new entity by clicking this here. And then, and then it's going to say, okay, start your registration. So it's going to tell you, you need all these diff different things here. So remember we said, you know, get your DUNS number, get your EIN number, all these different things. You know, this is getting you ready for this here. So we've done all that already. So there's a four-step process. But uh, you click on start registration. It's going to take you step by step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you not this here, but I'm going to show you uh, what it looked like. I'm going to show you the complete registration that's in here. I'm just going to go in and view it so you can see what it looks like once you're done. So we're already in here. So for me to view the detail, I click on this here. And I'm not going to update. I'm just going to view so you can kind of see. Uh, So in viewing, you know, once you finish, the system is going to assign you a case number. But as you go through, it's going to take you step by step through these steps here as you're entering data. So you're going to enter uh, the specific data. 
and then you go through step by step and then once you finish you hit submit and you're done and it takes about three days after you hit submit for this here to come back to you